deep in the heart of Hollywood, a land where the sun always shines, there's a corner where darkness prevails and horror lives. Well, we're in a, a lockdown facility 4,000 feet uh, below uh, Los Angeles, California. This museum, Dr. Shocker's House of Horror, caused me a fortune to license that name, by the way. As an actor, Daniel Roebuck is definitely a familiar face. Beyond a successful acting career, Daniel is a world-class collector of Hollywood horror movie memorabilia. Because when I was a kid, I loved these movies so much, I started watching the, the monsters. What was the makeup? I was looking at the makeup, then I noticed the actors, and I realized that these actors wearing all this makeup were, you know, they were great character actors. One thing that made me kind of a super collector curator was we grew up with a, a magazine called Famous Monsters of Filmland, and, and Forey Ackerman, who was the, the editor of that magazine, he had a house called the Acker Mansion filled with stuff. And, uh, you know, we were all kids and thought, boy, wouldn't it be great one day to have a house filled with stuff? Unfortunately, my wife wasn't reading that magazine, and she thought, how good would it be to have a house filled with furniture and children? That house full of stuff would eventually become Dr. Shocker's museum, a place where things that go bump in the night have found a home. I have some of Roddy McDowell's original uh, makeup pieces from the original Planet of the Apes that he wore on screen. Now, why is that rare? Because they were made of foam rubber, foam rubber rots away. Uh, a gentleman who did uh, my makeup when I played Jay Leno, and one day he brought this mason jar over. He said, is this something you'd like? He put him in a mason jar and sealed it, which is the only reason they exist today. Clearly, I have uh, an unnatural interest in, in masks. I'm just so, was so inspired by these actors in these movies, people like Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi and Lon Chaney and Lon Chaney Jr. Many parts I take where I'm, I insist that they do something with my hair, or my nose, or my teeth. I'm, I'm a guy who loves to wear makeup. Among collectors, the competition to find treasured items is fierce, but still friendly. Well, there's 10 of everything uh, now. Maybe back then there was two, just in case one would disappear. But if it's a prop or a mechanical head or something, that stuff, costumes, people are very competitive over costumes. I've met the nicest people in my entire life through collecting, and that's absolutely true, the nicest people I've ever met. And I think that I like to have stuff around because I keep meeting nice people. I mean, gracious people, giving people, thoughtful, considerate people. Although Daniel's vast collection is private, he still enjoys sharing it with the world, so visitors are always welcome. I probably, I would think, have one of the bigger wax museum uh, memorabilia collections in the country. And the thing is, that, you know, you got to be generous with that, too. You know, because part of what this is, it's a library as well. Dr. Shocker's House of Horror and library. I never did drugs, and I don't drink, and I needed something to put my money into instead of, like, saving it like normal people. So I, I filled a museum with this stuff. 